This drawer holds just some of the hundreds of Cretaceous fossils from the Washington, D.C. area here in the National Museum of Natural History Collections. And it provides a really great example of one of the common problems that paleontologists face. And that is most of the fossils that we find are isolated. We get individual bones or teeth and the challenge is to identify them. And it's a really simple process of observation and comparison and ultimately allows us to figure out both what part of the animal we have and how many animals together we have uh, represented. Here's a tooth, here's a claw, so a bone that has a somewhat tooth-like shape. They're both curved, they're both pointed, uh, but we can still tell them apart. Uh, the tooth has an enamel covering, so it's relatively shiny. This is a meat-eating dinosaur tooth, which means it has sharp edges, and they are serrated like uh, a steak knife. In contrast, the claw, because it's made of bone, has a somewhat spongy texture, and it has these grooves on the side. It would have been covered in a sheath, uh, which would have been made of keratin, like your fingernails. It's got a flat bottom and uh, an area here where it would have touched the finger that it was attached to. And so even though they're very generally similar, the basic shapes, uh, we can look at the details and figure out that these are two different fossils. Here in the Washington, D.C. area, we find teeth as the most common dinosaur fossils. And this is uh, four examples, four different kinds of dinosaurs. And you can see how the shapes are really uh, quite different from one to the next. And we can look at them and make comparisons to figure out which kinds of dinosaurs these are. These two fossil teeth represent two different meat-eating dinosaurs. Um, they're obviously quite different in shape, but there are also many other features about them that allow us to distinguish them. Uh, for example, under the microscope, we can look at the serrations on the edges of these teeth, and they're themselves very differently shaped. Uh, the teeth have different proportions and different curvatures. And so it's unlikely that these come simply from older and younger individuals or bigger and smaller ones. Um, more likely they're from different species. We also have several species of plant-eating dinosaurs. These two teeth come from two different species. Uh, this is from an armored dinosaur called a nodosaur. And it has a triangular tooth with these very large points on it, which would have been quite useful for chopping plant material. This tooth is from a sauropod dinosaur called Pleurocelis. And it would have had a mouthful of these very blunt teeth for stripping leaves off of trees and other larger plants. Uh, we can tell that they're not meat-eating dinosaurs from the shapes overall, and we can tell, of course, they're two different species because the teeth themselves are very different from one another. Some people believe that it's possible to identify the actual species of dinosaur from this uh, particular tooth. Um, however, we know that different species of dromaeosaurs have very similar teeth. Without having more fossils of the animal, it's really not possible to be specific about the kind of dromaeosaur we have. Even though we don't get complete dinosaur skeletons here in Washington, D.C., a collection like this is really important. By making these kinds of observations and comparisons, we can tell we have almost a dozen species of dinosaurs, ranging from the size of a chicken to almost the size of a house. And that's actually really important in understanding what life was like here 110 million years ago.